Actually, I've decided to go on a trip to Hawaii starting now. I received a call from my husband, who betrayed me and continued to extort money from me. I haven't heard anything about Hawaii. My husband responds to this with a smile on his face. Well, you didn't say anything. Even I need to take a break once in a while, you know. So I decided to unwind in Hawaii. <laughs> huh? What about the money? Uh, I borrowed your credit card. <laughs> I'll be living it up, so take care of the payments. <laughs> I hurriedly checked my wallet. Certainly, my credit card was missing. Hey, what do you mean taking my card without permission? Don't be stingy. Your earnings are mine and what's mine is mine, right? So I have the right to use it too. Who does he think he is? Some cartoon character? My husband spun arguments that make me want to say just that. When I firmly refused, he responded with a, Well, if that's how it is. And the call from him ended. Finally, I began to take action. As a result, my foolish husband is about to experience hell. My name is Grace. I'm a 31-year-old housewife. To be honest, my family is well off. My father runs a company, and my mother is a full-time housewife, and I hold a managerial position at my father's company. To avoid the appearance of nepotism, I took all required exams and presented myself as an unrelated individual with the same surname as the president. Of course, I earned it through both caution and competence. In my early years, my father showered me with affection and generously funded my education. However, upon graduating from college, he pushed me to stand on my own. Initially, he even told me to apply to a different company. Still, as I admired my father's work, I pleaded with him to let me join his company. He reluctantly agreed, promising not to engage in favoritism. Given such circumstances, I moved out of my family home a long time ago and have been living on my own. Motivated by a desire to repay my father, I dedicated myself to work for several years. I found myself in my late 20s without a boyfriend. Whenever I returned home, my mother would express concern, saying, Hey Grace, it's great that you're working hard, but you should start thinking about your own happiness soon. I'm happy right now with my job. It's not about that. Haven't you thought about marriage? Should I help find someone for you? Mom, why are you so obsessed with marriage? Your dad is quite old-fashioned. If he insists on someone taking over the company, I think it would be better if it were your future husband and not you. We would feel more at ease if you married a wonderful person. While I was slightly shocked by my mother's words, I found myself agreeing. Certainly, my father had never explicitly said, take over the company. It was likely because he naturally assumed it would be a man who would inherit. My father had some old-fashioned beliefs, for sure. Afterward, I decided to find a marriage partner on my own. Despite my mother recommending several arranged meetings, I wanted to choose my life partner myself. I rushed into participating in speed dating events. Even after dating various people, none seemed to click with me. It was during those times that I encountered the man who would later become my husband, Greg Turner. Greg works as a salaried employee in a top-tier company in the same industry as my father. With a gentle smile, he was quite popular at matchmaking events. Greg invited me on a date, and for a year, our relationship had no issues. He always paid for our dates and escorted me gracefully. When he proposed, I hesitantly shared the situation at home. Greg, my father is actually the president of a company called T-Corp. Huh? T-Corp? Isn't that a famous company in our industry? Yeah, and since I'm the only daughter, I was hoping you'd consider it. Greg took a moment to think before responding. Got it. Let's hear what my mom thinks first. Greg's father died when he was in middle school and he was raised by his mother by herself. We headed to his family's house together and met his mother. Welcome. I've been looking forward to meeting you. His mother, a stylish and lively woman, greeted us. As expected, she was a career woman overseeing a fashion company. When we told her about our marriage plans and that we wanted him to inherit the company, she smiled and said, 
That's fine. Our family isn't the kind that needs someone to inherit. If you two are happy, that's what matters the most. Thank you so much, Mom. And so, the marriage introduction with his mother was concluded. By that time, I had grown to really like my mother-in-law. Your mom is such a wonderful person. She exudes this modern, career-oriented woman vibe, and I find it admirable. Is that so? When she gets mad, she's terrifying. I can't stand up to her. I couldn't help but laugh at Greg, who shrugged his shoulders. Afterward, it was time to visit my parents' house. When Greg informed them of our intentions, my father and mother were more delighted than I had imagined. Grace, you've brought an amazing person. We bless your happiness. That's great, Grace. Greg, take care of our daughter, okay? Greg stood tall and responded warmly to my parents in a refreshing manner. Later, we got married and started living together. My parents gave us a new apartment as a wedding gift. The house was registered under my name. Living in a beautiful city apartment, we thought we'd both work hard and collaborate on household chores. I believed in such an ideal newlywed life. However, that ideal was quickly shattered. Greg unexpectedly quit his job just one month after we got married. What do you mean? Quitting your job? Come on, Grace. You're getting a decent salary. And eventually, you'll inherit T Corp, right? I was thinking of being a house husband until then. What are you talking about? I don't have any support from my parents. I can't rely on that. With your salary, we'll be fine. Let me take it easy. Despite repeatedly pleading with him to find a job, Greg didn't take it seriously. Instead, he started to resist, saying, I came as their son-in-law, and this is how you treat me? Having felt the need to compromise with such a husband, I asked him to at least take care of the household chores properly. Leave it to me. Since I'm a house husband, I'll handle the housework. Even though Greg said that, his household chores were incredibly sloppy. The rooms were messy, laundry was scattered around, and dinner consisted of supermarket ready-made dishes. In the end, I had to redo everything. One day, unable to endure it any longer, I said, Greg, you're not doing any of the housework properly. I want you to be a bit more responsible. What? I'm doing my best. What's with that attitude? But... Seriously, that's what you call having some moral standards. Is it fun for you to blame a vulnerable house husband like me? Faced with Greg's complaints, I could only sigh. I worked while giving Greg the living expenses, and he handled the household tasks carelessly. This lifestyle continued for a whole year. Around the one-year mark of our marriage, Greg started asking me for money. Hey, Grace. I'm running short on living expenses. Huh? Already? I just gave you some not long ago. Well, it's not enough. Can't help it, right? Each time, I reluctantly handed him a few more dollars. Greg even asked me to get a credit card for him, but I refused. With his spending habits, it was unpredictable. Greg, what on earth are you spending so much on? This is going to put us in the red. I was quite worried. During that time, I had to plan a company trip, so I went to a travel agency alone. I was having a meeting in a booth surrounded by walls when I overheard a conversation in the next booth. Hey, where are we going? The Bahamas? Anywhere with you is fun, but you know isn't Hawaii better than the Bahamas? I could hear snippets of the couple's conversation. The voice of that man was unmistakably familiar. It was the exact voice of my husband, Greg. I interrupted the meeting, peeked out from behind the wall, and confirmed it. There he was, Greg. With a smug smile, arm in arm with a woman I didn't recognize, selecting brochures for their trip. At that moment, I understood everything. The reason he became cold towards me and frequently asked for money was because he was having an affair with that woman. I won't forgive him for making a fool out of me. While my head felt like it was boiling, I returned to the meeting booth. The scene I witnessed a moment ago kept swirling in my mind. After that, I took action and asked a private investigator to look into Greg. In just one week, substantial evidence of his affair had been gathered. It turned out 
he was meeting that woman almost every day while I was at work. The woman's name was Heather. Apparently, she worked at night. As I was grappling with the results of the investigation, my phone rang. The caller was Greg. Hello? Oh, Grace. Working hard, huh? Greg spoke arrogantly. So what? What do you want? Hey, can you guess where I am right now? An airport announcement could be heard in the background. The airport? Ding dong! Actually, I've decided to go on a trip to Hawaii now. Greg casually mentioned such a thing. In my mind, the image of the two choosing a travel brochure at the booth came back. I tried to stay as calm as possible. Hawaii? I never heard about that. Well, you didn't say anything. As a full-time house husband, I need to relax sometimes, right? So I decided to stretch my wings in Hawaii. Huh? What about the money? I borrowed your credit card. <laughs> we'll share the expenses, but you'll take care of the payment, okay? I hurriedly checked my wallet. Indeed, my credit card was missing. Hey, what's the idea with taking my credit card without permission? Don't be stingy. <laughs> your earnings are mine. And what's mine is mine, right? So, I have the right to use it. Who does he think he is? Some cartoon character? My husband's fun arguments that make me want to say just that. When I firmly refused, he responded with a, Well, if that's how it is. And the call from him ended. The phone call gave the impression that he was going alone. But there was no doubt he was with his affair partner, Heather. Attempting to use my card for their affair? What audacity. I wonder if they're having a good laugh right now. Even though he was my husband, I was utterly disgusted. I must teach him a lesson. I regained my composure and took action. Timing their arrival in Hawaii, I called the company, reported my credit card as stolen, and had it cancelled. After a while, Greg called me, but I ignored it. Five days later, when I was at home, Greg returned in a tattered state. His hair was sticky, his face showed signs of fatigue, and he looked as if he hadn't taken a bath. Perhaps sunburned. In such a state, Greg confronted me. Hey, my credit card didn't work there. What's going on? Huh? I cancelled it. You cancelled it? Why the hell would you do that? I told you I was going to Hawaii, didn't I? If the card is stolen, cancelling it is only natural. Greg became furious at my nonchalant response. Because of you, I couldn't even stay in a hotel and had to sleep rough in Hawaii. I hardly had any cash, so I survived on just two pieces of bread for three days. I thought I was going to die. So how did you make it back? All I had was a plane ticket. I got tangled up with the local punks and it was a real mess. How are you going to make up for this? Oh, it sounds like you had a fun Hawaii trip. As I calmly remarked, Greg glared at me. But seriously, you didn't have to go this far, did you? My life was really in danger. I feel like suing you. It's me who should be suing. Huh? At that moment, I threw several photos on the floor. Those photos clearly showed evidence of Greg's affair. Intimate moments, entering a hotel and even a snapshot of them holding a large travel bag at the airport. Seeing those pictures, Greg's face turned pale. What is this? Did you know about it? Yes, I've been asking the detective agency for a while now. You were planning to use my card for your affair, weren't you? Ugh. Facing Greg, who turned pale and stuttered, I continued calmly. You'll compensate me for the affair and the money you embezzled, of course. And of course, we're getting a divorce. Huh? Divorce? Are you kidding me? Divorce over something like this? Just as Greg uttered those words, a woman's voice echoed in the room. You're the one kidding around. Upon confirming the source of the voice, Greg's legs gave out. M mom why are you here? Yes, I have summoned his mother to this place. 
I explained his behavior and lifestyle, showed evidence of his affair, and had his mother waiting in the next room. His mother approached him with determination and delivered a powerful slap. Smack. A loud sound echoed in the room. What the hell, mom? What are you doing? What about you? I didn't even know you quit your job. Not only did you become unemployed and rely on Grace, but you also stole her credit card for a cheating trip. What on earth were you thinking? W well The only thing you can do is to sincerely apologize to Grace and accept her demands. Come on, sit down. Greg's mom grabbed his head and forced him to sit on the floor. He told me in a trembling voice as he shrank back from such a mother. Grace, I'm really sorry. It's all my fault. That's right. There's no denying that. At that moment, Greg lifted his head. But please, don't just divorce me. I don't want to lose this life, my position as president of T-Corp, or anything else. I'll be a good husband from now on, so please let this incident slide. His mother, without a moment's hesitation, forcefully slapped Greg's head. Seeing him like that, I shouted loudly. Who's going to forgive you, you jerk? I'm definitely divorcing you. Pay the alimony quickly and disappear, you worthless man. The rest is up to hell to decide. No, no way. Greg cried out in tears and was dragged away by his mother by the scruff of his neck. Later on, the divorce between Greg and me somehow went through. He was ordered by his mother to pay alimony and the amount he misappropriated totaling $60,000. I also demanded alimony from his cheating partner. She initially claimed she couldn't pay, but when I threatened to take legal action, she borrowed money and paid up. This apparently triggered a breakup between Greg and her. Having depleted his savings due to payments to me, Greg tried to return to his parents' house, but his mother refused. She had completely severed ties with Greg. Now homeless, he reportedly moved into a rundown apartment and is currently job hunting. Even upon hearing this, I feel no sympathy whatsoever. I can only think, serves you right. On the other hand, I am working hard while living alone. Recently, my father told me, You are more capable than I thought. I hope you take over the company in the future. Those words were more than joyful for me. Currently, I have revealed my identity within the company, and I'm undergoing training under my father as a successor. I would like to continue to make my life brighter by never ceasing my efforts. Oh, come on. You're always relying on mom, aren't you? Why don't you at least do the housework by yourself? Then my normally mild-mannered mother-in-law became furious with my husband. You're in the way. Get out of my house right now. My husband was kicked out by his mother, but then he did something unbelievable. My name is Madison, a 30-year-old office worker. My husband Kyle and I have been married for two years. We met through group dating, where he approached me and soon started dating. From the first time I met him, I had the impression that he was cool, funny, and handsome. He also worked for a large company, so to be honest, that was also a plus for me. I was happy that he approached me, and I was immediately attracted to him. He went on a few dates before making it official. We continued to date steadily, and a year after we started dating, we got married. I knew I could have a happy married life with him. We met each other's parents, had the wedding ceremony, and before I knew it, we were a married couple. Even so, the newlywed life was exciting, and every day was fresh and fun. My husband wanted me to stay at home, so I became a full-time housewife. I worked hard every day to take care of the housework. I carefully cleaned the house to make it comfortable, and I made sure to iron all the shirts my husband wore every day. I also put a lot of effort into cooking, making sure to make several types of dishes every day and packed lunches for him too. My husband was very satisfied with my efforts and praised me for it. 
You work really hard to do the housework, and it really helps me out. Thanks for everything. I was very happy just to hear my husband say that. After that, I continued to do my best. After all, when my husband praises me, I feel motivated. It makes me want to do more, and more things for him. My husband took me to outings on his days off, and took me to nice restaurants on our anniversaries. Because of these things, my newlywed life was extremely happy. I also had a good relationship with my in-laws. Every time I went to my in-law's house, they were very nice to me. Madison, we got some delicious snacks, so why don't you join us? Oh, that sounds good. Okay then, I'll get the coffee. He's been into making hand-dripped coffee these days, so we'll just have to let him do it. Oh, come on. Don't say it like that. I'll make sure you get a nice cup of coffee. My in-laws are a very close couple, and I've always looked up to them as husband and wife. Well, I guess my husband and I are similarly close and happily married. I was happy as a newlywed, and my relationship with my in-laws was good, and everything was going well. Two years after our marriage, I became pregnant. I was overjoyed to have a child with my husband I loved so much. When the doctor told me I was pregnant, I immediately went and told my husband. What? We're having a baby? Yay, I can't wait. Madison, I'm going to try my best to be a great father. My husband was extremely happy when he heard the news. I'm glad he loves kids, and seeing him so happy made me happy too. We are going to have a warm and happy family, aren't we? Yes, of course. After that, I told my in-laws that I was pregnant, and they were very happy as well. It's great to see the face of our grandchild so soon, isn't it? You'll have to buy all kinds of baby goodies, right, Madison? If there's anything we can do to help, don't hesitate to ask. You can count on us. Yes, thank you very much. My parents live in a rural area in the countryside, so I can't just casually go home. So it's quite reassuring to have my in-laws living in the same area as us. Moreover, both of my in-laws are so kind to me, so I really appreciate it. I thought that I would be able to have a good relationship with my in-laws and enjoy my days with them after the birth of my child. However, after I became pregnant, my husband's true nature, which I did not know about, gradually became clear to me. That day, I was extremely ill due to morning sickness. I didn't have the energy to cook dinner. I had never had a day like this since we got married. I've never been sick because I'm genuinely immune and don't catch colds. But this pregnancy was beyond my imagination, and I got sicker than I expected. I was so sick that I did not feel like moving around and doing the housework. I messaged my husband around lunchtime. It was to say that I couldn't cook dinner, so I wanted him to buy some on the way home. I received a reply of concern and acknowledgement that he understood. That day was really bad and I laid there all day. My husband looked at me and said, You look really sick, as he worried about me. He told me to take it easy and I was grateful for his words. I finally felt a little better after sleeping all day, but the smell of food was still too strong for me to make my husband's lunch. This has never happened to me before and I felt so sorry. I needed to get better soon. I bought some fruit and other things to nourish myself for the time being. I tried to do as much light housework as I could without overdoing it and just concentrated on resting my body. Finally at night, I felt better and was able to cook dinner. Oh, dinner is ready. You must be feeling better. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you so much. No, it's okay. Well, I don't want this to happen again and again, though. What? My husband was munching on his dinner while saying that. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to go through morning sickness, and to be honest, I didn't know what to expect when he'd say something like that to me. I tried to stay in shape as much as possible. There are some things you can't control. About a month later, I got really sick again with morning sickness, so I couldn't cook for my husband like I always did. 
I sent a message to my husband asking him to prepare his meal by himself, as I had done last time. But he didn't reply. I had a bad feeling about this, but I was too sick to do anything about it, so I went back to sleep. When I woke up, it was after 8 p.m. I dragged myself out of bed and went to the living room. My husband was already home, drinking beer in front of the TV. Hey, I didn't hear you come home. I'm sorry I couldn't make dinner today. Yeah, well, you'll have to do better tomorrow, won't you? My husband turned to me and said in a deep voice. Then he immediately turned to the TV. He seemed to be angry. That's when I remembered what he said the other day about how he didn't want this to happen again and again. But I didn't skip dinner because I didn't want to cook, and I wasn't sick on purpose. I wanted my husband to understand that. I wondered if he would start to give me the cold shoulder when I got sick again. I became even more anxious. And I was right. A week later, I got sick again. I was surprised at myself at how often I felt sick. I was hesitant to contact my husband, but I sent him a message asking him to prepare his meal again. My husband responded very coldly this time. That's enough. Don't take advantage of me like that. You're a housewife, so do your part. These messages came one after another. Then my husband sent a message saying that if I didn't have any dinner ready, he would go out for a drink. And that was the end of the exchange. It's terrible that he goes out for a drink when his wife is feeling nauseous. I thought he was just angry and said such a thing, but he really went out for a drink and came back at 2 a.m. I was extremely anxious until he came home. I was afraid that my condition would get worse and collapse. And after that, he became very strict with me. You've been so lazy lately, haven't you? I can tell you've been slacking off on cleaning and cooking. I'm sorry, but I'm not in the best of shape to do the housework, and this is all I can do. I told you to stop making excuses like that. Being a housewife is easy, isn't it? I've worked my butt off to provide living for the both of us. But to be treated with such shoddy housework makes me wish I could be you lying around at home. How could he say such a thing? I was shocked. My husband doesn't help me with the housework at all, no matter how hard it is for me. And on the contrary, he abuses me with his words like that. I called my mother-in-law, desperate for help. When I told her that I was very sick from the pregnancy, she told me to go over to their house right away, and she even offered to drive over to pick me up if it was needed. Madison, are you okay? The sickness during pregnancy is hard for some people, so don't push yourself too hard. When we arrived at my in-law's house, my mother-in-law told me to take it easy, and she prepared some food for me to eat that was good for my pregnant body. How about you just stay here for a while? What? Well, your parents' house is too far away and your brother and his wife lives with them, right? That's right. Indeed, my brother and his wife lives with my parents, and since they are quite far away, it was practically impossible for me to go back to my own parents' house. So, I was very grateful to be allowed to spend time at my in-laws' house as if they were my own parents. But without me, there would be no one to do the housework. When I said that, my mother-in-law told me not to worry about it. He's a grown man, so he should be able to do that on his own. If it's okay with you, I'll call Kyle right away. I was a little torn, but I decided to take my mother-in-law's word for it. Since my mother-in-law contacted Kyle, my husband couldn't complain to his mother and readily allowed me to stay there. I spent some time at my in-laws' house, and I really felt at home. My in-laws treated me as if I was their real daughter, and told me I didn't have to do any of the housework. This allowed me to rest my body and calm down mentally. About a month after I started living there, my husband suddenly came to the house. It was Sunday morning and my in-laws had just driven to the supermarket in the next town over to do some shopping because they were having a special sale. I was in good health, so I stayed at home and waited for my in-laws. 
I was surprised when my husband came out of the blue. Kyle, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is my parents' house. It's my business, whether I decide to come home or not. You're the stranger here. He still talked to me coldly. I thought he might be a little nicer to me now that I've been away for a while, but his attitude hadn't changed since right before I left. He sat down on the sofa with a thud and let out a deep sigh. Oh, my head hurts from the hangover. My husband says this, though nobody asked. I drank out last night, or rather until this morning. His wife is going to have a baby soon, and he'd been drinking until the morning. I was listening to my husband, thinking to myself that he was really selfish. Then my husband looked at me. What is it? I asked, not knowing why he was looking at me. He sighed and told me to at least serve him tea. I was annoyed, but I wasn't feeling too bad today, so I offered him tea. You've really become sloppy, haven't you? He drank the tea while saying that. Then he laid down on the sofa and started watching TV. I wonder why he came over here. If he just wanted to relax, why didn't he stay back home? Apparently, the place where he had been drinking this morning was closer to his parents' house than to his own. That's why he came here. After relaxing on the sofa, he asked me to cook something for him. By that time, my bump was getting bigger and all my movements were as if in slow motion. I had no choice but to make breakfast for him, though. But he saw me moving so slowly and blurted out. How slow can you move? I hope you haven't been skipping on housework the whole time you've been here. Your mother is kind enough to tell me not to worry about housework, so she's been doing most of it. I answered honestly. Then my husband shrugged his shoulders and made fun of me. Oh, come on. You're always relying on mom, aren't you? Why don't you at least do the housework by yourself? If I had to deal with a husband who blamed me like that, I would get sick again. So I told him I was sorry and that I would take care of it, and prepared his breakfast as told. Just then, my in-laws came home. Oh, Kyle, you're home. I thought I'd come over to my parents for a bit. You're being too easy on Madison. She's forgotten how to cook and clean. If she comes home after having a baby, and she's still doing everything so slowly, it's just useless. My husband badmouthed me like that, even in front of my in-laws. Then, my mother-in-law, who was usually mild-mannered, became furious with my husband. What a thing to say to your pregnant wife. She's going to have a baby soon, and her bump is getting bigger, so it's no wonder she's moving slower. Shame on you for not knowing that and saying such a thing to her. What the hell? Why are you so angry? You're in the way, and I want you out of my house right now. My husband was surprised, because my mother-in-law was fierce. And just like that, my husband was kicked out by my mother-in-law. My in-laws apologized to me when they did nothing wrong. My husband had left, and there was peace again. But then he did something unbelievable. It was when my mother-in-law went to check on him for me and picked up a few of my things on the way. My mother-in-law came home furious, and there was my husband next to her. What's going on? Kyle brought home a woman. Huh? I couldn't understand on the spot. Oh, she was just... Um, she is... My husband was choking on his words as if he couldn't find a good excuse. I guess that answers that question. He was having an affair. Since when? How long have you been having an affair? I asked, surprisingly quietly. Well, um, about six months ago. That long? My husband had been having an affair since a little while after we found out I was pregnant. He said it was with a colleague from his company. She told me I was so cool working so hard for my future baby and then... I didn't want to hear what happened after that. My mother-in-law slaps my husband. You're such a scoundrel. You should be ashamed of yourself. My husband looked smaller as my mother-in-law yelled at him. I lost all affection for him at once. I think we'll have to separate. What? I knew I couldn't trust you after what you've been doing and saying lately. I can't imagine how hard it must be for you to be a single mother when you're going to have a child. 
When my husband said that, my in-laws got angry again. Who do you think is to blame for all this? My husband shut his mouth at that. Madison, you do what you want. I'm sorry our son did such a horrible thing. My in-laws were totally on my side. Anyway, I needed to focus on the birth right now. So they say I can stay with them until the baby was born. And they cut off their son and didn't allow him to come back to their house. I safely gave birth a little while later. A healthy baby girl was born. My in-laws were very happy to see their grandchild. Of course, I didn't let my husband see her. After that, I divorced my husband and filed for alimony against him and the affair partner. And of course, I asked my husband for child support. For the time being, it allowed me to live on that while I looked for a job. I immediately went job hunting and luckily got hired. I kept my daughter at a daycare center and decided to live as a single mother from then on. I have kept in touch with my in-laws since then and I visit them regularly for them to see their grandchild. I heard that my ex-husband tried to remarry his affair partner, but apparently she actually had a real boyfriend and dumped him without a second thought. However, my ex-husband got upset at that and told her boyfriend about the affair and the boyfriend dumped her soon after. The affair partner and my ex-husband had a huge fight, which became a problem within the company. As a result, the affair partner resigned voluntarily and my ex-husband was sent to a smaller branch in a rural town. When I hear things like that, I realize again how foolish it is to be naive and have an affair with a light heart. On the other hand, I am living with my daughter and seeing her become capable of doing various things every day makes me very happy. I will continue to work hard for my daughter and enjoy watching her grow up. What a lousy husband to be so selfish while having an affair himself. It's a good thing that her in-laws were very kind. I'm sure Madison will be able to live independently, and I hope she continues to stay close with her daughter and make lots of happy memories with her. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you liked our story. See you in the next video.